Raghav, do you think that um, when China, Deng Xiaoping started China's reform process, almost every single one of China's human development indicators, literacy, education, female, you know, whatever form of female, was, was I think, an order of magnitude better than others. Is, is that in some sense, are we, are we fooling ourselves that we're in, in, even in the same category? Well, clearly their uh, human indicators were far ahead of us. But on the flip side of the coin, our institutional indicators were far ahead. There was a balance. I think we lost the race. Uh, by uh, by simply our own uh, getting trapped in, in in our own difference. I just want to pick up, even That's dare to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to pick up one point with you. You know, Nainan made a very interesting point about balance sheet and income. I thought that's a fundamental point. To which I just want one question. Balance sheets, by their very nature, transform their productivities. Your uh, case seemed to suggest that if we deplete our balance sheet, uh, and continue to just look at the accretion of income, we could be headed towards disaster. My counter to that is, if you also are transforming the productivity of your balance sheet, then that doesn't quite hold. The depletion argument doesn't quite hold. As America and China both, America has shown already, China is in the process of showing. No, no, I, thanks Raghav, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm gonna sidestep that debate because one, I don't agree. When you talk about improving the productivity of capital, uh, that is the exact opposite of destroying capital. Let's say when, when we are mining extra for coal, you could simultaneously be building up capacities in say renewable energy, which over a period of time will let you fill the void that you have created but, in yeah, coal. That's not mutually exclusive. You can build up renewable energy capacity without destroying the forest. But there is a period of time in which you have to build up that capacity. If you look at income, um, you get a certain picture. But if you look at the balance sheet, you get a different picture. And that was my point. That uh, if you are conscious of what's happening to your balance sheet, um, to, the, to what's happening to your assets, uh, I mean, the first thing that happens in a drought, we were discussing in the office this morning, is what? The people let their cattle loose because they can't feed them anymore. There's no fodder. Let's say that uh, since we're talking, we, we're sitting in a situation where a former prime minister is uh, has been indicted for um, a question of, you know, whether or not he can assign coal to a private company. You were, you were handing it over to private companies and assuming that that process of pushing it there would cause income to grow, but you weren't pricing it properly. Is that, how would that feature in your balance sheet versus income analogy? Um, if you were um, gen taking your uh, natural asset, which is coal, and uh, turning it into uh, a flow, income, power, electricity from, yeah, to yeah. generate thing. You are generating income, and you are taking away an asset. No, but while in the process of generating income, you have created capability. If you have. Well, that's what I'm saying. Therefore, there. So that's that's the only point I was making. That the balance sheet and income uh, are. No, no. You has a third a, dimension, you, which no, no. is. If you get, uh, if you look at income, you will get a certain picture. If you look at the balance sheet, you will get a certain picture. No question that the balance sheet is, is a terribly important. And that actually gives you a different picture. Yes.